actually, call yeah. To order. What do you want me to do? Yeah. You know, call to order. We do announcement and then go to section number 117. Okay. That's what I would do. Yep. Make sense? Okay, do we, are we ready to start? Yep. We are on. <laughs> okay, we're going to, uh, uh, Craig's running a little bit late, so we're not going to do anything too too strenuous until he gets here, but we do have a few things we can um, we can take care of. So we can take care of some announcements. We want to talk about the carnival. Does that sound good? Sure. Who wants to talk about that? You. <laughs> uh, you, want to, you want to talk about that? I can do it if you want. Go ahead. Okay. As chair, I can just... <laughs> Delegate. Yes, yes. So coming up June 28th, 29th, and 30th, we will be having a town carnival back in the town park right out here. Um, it'll be fun for the whole family. Uh, carnival rides, games, and delicious food. There are advanced tickets on sale at Fanuel. I think it's Finelli. Finelli. Finelia? Finelli Amusements.com. We'll have this posted on our website as well. So the carnival sounds like fun, and I heard that there will be fireworks on Saturday night, June 29th. That is correct. So I think most of the information is already on the website, so that's mm -hmm. exciting. Okay, is that good? Sure. That's good. Okay, so we get to the next uh, announcement. It's Pride Month, which I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> but I've got almost everything. This is for Craig. It's a wristband. Nice. He's not here yet, so screw Craig. <laughs> um, you want to read this whole big thing? You want me to? Um, I can if you want. You it's... don't have to read the whole thing. I just thought maybe you wanted to grab pieces of it. It's oh, you. boy. Okay. It's a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, I'll hit it. You want to hit yeah, it? Yeah, I'll hit it. All right, it, it ends abruptly, though. It doesn't continue at the bottom. You go to the second page. No, yeah. it doesn't. It says do its and then oh. Yeah, we do. Okay. So anyway, for anybody that doesn't know, um, Pride Month is uh, is June, and it it, uh, it celebrates all kinds of walks of life, right? Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. I can't even keep up anymore. LB, LGBTQI plus community. So a lot of progress has happened for for generations. Um, uh, the LGBTQI plus Americans have summoned the courage to live authentically and proudly, even when it meant putting their lives and livelihoods at risk. 1969 was Stonewall in New York. That was really the beginning of everything. Um, and in this month, we just try to celebrate all kinds of walks of life and, um, and just keep moving forward. And I have to say, on a personal note, Millis is one of the more tolerant communities. I don't know if anybody out there knows that, but as somebody, it is. And um, it's extraordinary, and it's always been, because I've been out my whole life, and when it wasn't popular, um, now we appear to be in. You know, wait long enough, right? It comes around. Um, but Millis has always been tolerant. And that's an incredible thing for a tiny little community that we are. And um, I'm proud to say that I'm a part of this community. That's all I got. OK, so. So before you move on, is this where we would um, make a motion for the field of flags? Sure. OK. I move that we allow for a field of pride flags to be displayed on the front lawn of the town hall uh, starting maybe tomorrow until the end of June. Okay. I like that. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And you're putting, you personally? I am personally going to go out there and put up 200 pr pride flags on the town lawn, okay. so. <laughs> So if you're not doing anything, <laughs> when are you doing that? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, yes. What time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. <laughs> yes, Erin and I and Victoria will be putting the flags up wow. as best we can. I might have to stop by. Stop by. <clears throat> okay, that's exciting. Finish the, you're done? Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> so 
I forgot to put this on the announcement. Just want to remind everybody, the transfer station is on summer hours and will open on Wednesday nights till 6.45. Just so everybody just remember, 6.45 on Wednesday nights. Hey, Jim, since you're there, did you also want to reiterate the watering regulation? Yeah, we also have a watering ban that's uh, in place. Um, it was posted on the website in the beginning of May, uh, well in before it was imposed. And it is uh, a two-day watering ban, and this is from the Mass DEP. It's got nothing to do with the Millis DPW or administration or anything like that. Um, it, and we will be out enforcing the two-a-day week. So it's odd even. I think Monday and Wednesday is for even numbers, and Tuesday and Thursday is for odd numbers. And, and the weekends. And for, I was going to say, Jim, for the people that um, will say we've oh, had an okay. immense amount of rain, how on earth do we have a watering ban? What is the answer to that? The answer to that is it's the Mass DEP and the Massachusetts Conservation. They want to conserve water. Uh, our, the gauge that we are under is at the Charles River and the Franklin Town Line. And it's just, it's, um, it's part of our new water permit that we will be uh, going to town meeting in November because it will be a new charter change for all that. So that'll be coming up in November. Thank you for reminding me. Certainly. Okay, we good? Mm -hmm. So we're going to jump the schedule a little bit and go to... Um, 117? Yes. So we have run back to school event, boosters. Did you find that? You I'm, I'm on my way. That? You're on your way? <laughs> Uh, hold on. We just have to Among find water. <coughs> so if you, if you want to start, Erin, I was just going to say the Recreation um, Department has is requesting permission to hang banners at the town um, pickleball courts, which are actually uh, under okay. the purview of the town. Mm -hmm. uh, from June 10th to July 1st, they would like to put a banner up to advertise the upcoming carnival. Um, and then from June 15th to the 30th, they would like to switch it out and advertise for the summer concert series, which will be, uh, summer concerts will be every Wednesday in August. Okay. Okay, so do we need to? We need a motion. Okay. So I move, hold on, I need to get to the page because that's not written down here. Sorry, guys. My poor little team of sorts today, but bear with us. <laughs> no, not that one. Here it is. Okay, I move that the I move that we approve the um, tennis pickleball court um, banners for June 10th through July 1st to advertise the upcoming carnival, as well as July 15th through August 30th to advertise for the summer concert series. Okay, I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we have. The bike ride for food? For Actually, nope. That's the run back to school, which is the boosters. Yes. Okay. The boosters event. Um, so, Allison, I don't know. You want to see? Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I didn't get an invite. Hello it again, everybody. No, it's under the calendar. It doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Sorry. Go ahead, Allison. No, good to see you all again. I'm Allison Marr with the Millis Boosters. Um, and... Every September, usually this the last Sunday of the month, we hold our event. It's a, a one-mile fun run and a 5K walk run, and it's held at the high school. It's the same course we've been doing for a few years. Um, we've kind of been in touch with the DPW, school administrators, police fire, Millis Rec, try to make sure there are no, um, you know, conflicts. And everybody's on board, and it's always a fun event. And um, so it's September 29th, kicking off at 9 a.m., um, and it's you know, open to everybody, and it's always a good event. So we'd love your approval. Okay, sounds good. I actually do that event every year. Yes, she does. <clears throat> so okay. looking forward to that. I move that the board approve the Boosters ba Run Back to School event set for Sunday, September 29th, 2024, as specified and in coordination with the Millis Public Safety Departments and school personnel. Okay. Do uh, you want to second it? Sure. Second <laughs> Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Perfect. Uh, the next one, what was that, September 29th? Yes. The run. Sunday, September 29th. Maybe I'll even 
train and do it. Get out. I might. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. Okay, so. Now, now it's the bike ride. Now we have the, uh, the bike ride for food. So this is, a, they, this is their 13th annual uh, bicycle ride for food. It comes through Millis on Sunday morning, October 6th. Uh, the purpose of the Ride for Food is to partner with hunger relief organizations to raise critical funds to fight hunger in eastern Massachusetts. It will benefit approximately 25 to 30 food pantries. Um, and so they're just asking for approval to actually come through town. Uh, and they will have two police details, one at Route 115 in Baltimore and one at Pleasant Street and Village uh, from the hours of 9 a.m. to 12. So they're just looking for formal approval. Okay. Um, the police are fine with this and they will have the details. Okay. Do we have a, a motion for that? Yes. I move that the board approve the 13th annual bicycle ride for food to come through town as specified on Sunday, October 6, 2024, with a police detail from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Route 115 in Baltimore Street and the intersection of Pleasant and Village Streets. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, you're here now. Do you want to take over the motion? He seconds. I second. Oh, she does second. motion. Yeah. Oh, you're the motion. Yeah, see, I'm you've motion. changed seats. It really messed up everything. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm screwing everybody <laughs> up. It's supposed to be way down there. Okay. It's supposed to be here. Okay. <laughs> um, lawn signs and for Millis yeah, Soccer. Last one is the lawn sign request by yep. the Millis Soccer Club. Um, and all they would like to do is put two lawn signs out at I'm not quite sure. They asked for them in kind of funny spots, but um, I think they want to put one right here by the sign as you're entering into um, the town park area here. And then they asked for one at the Clyde Brown School, which we cannot approve, but we could approve one if you want to put one in the front of uh, the Veterans <laughs> Memorial Building. Um, and it's just to advertise that registration um, is happening for the Millis Soccer Club. And they will be up from tomorrow through June 25th. Okay. I move that the board approve the request to place lawn signs announcing Millis Soccer Club registration at Town Park near the directional signs and in front of the Veterans Memorial Building from June 11th through June 25th, 2024. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, where are we jumping to? Going back to 107. Now I think you can start at the beginning. Back up. All right, there we go. <laughs> okay. Mine don't seem to have numbers. Uh, no, yours doesn't. Yours has X's. Oh. I got, I don't so know what I'm carrying. She, she printed an old one. I, I didn't get the invite. Old 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 I didn't get the invite. I didn't get one of those, Jesus. even an old one. <laughs> you got a new one or no? Anybody got a new one? Only on my computer. I just have sleeves to just emotions. Okay. There you go. There. That's why I sit next to Mike. There you go. <laughs> okay. What number are we going to? 107. 107. Okay. The presentation of the 2024 Lansing Millis Service Award to Richard Poslensky. That Richard? You got it. All right. Uh, you want to read? Uh, sure. Is it in here? Yeah, it's in here okay. somewhere. I think Elizabeth is going to speak. Right. Elizabeth, do you want to speak? Do you want us to speak? What do you want to do? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Derwin. I'm a member of the Council on Aging Board. And the Lansing Millis Legacy Award was established last year to honor and recognize the volunteer contributions of our senior residents. Volunteers are vital to our town government, to activities and services offered throughout the town, and to improving the quality of life for all our residents. The Lansing Millis Legacy Award is jointly presented by the Select Board and the Council on Aging Board to celebrate the volunteer contributions of a senior resident and to advance the importance of volunteering in our town. This year's recipient is Rich Poskolinski. Rich has lived in town for more than 30 years and offers his, offers his services to our senior residents needing transportation to medical appointments, shopping for groceries, or medical supplies, or any other necessary errands. Access to this transportation is a lifeline to some of our seniors and is a critical enabler to allowing some folks to remain in their homes. Rich takes an interest in his passengers and his patient and caring way he's become an integral part of their support team. Rich is also a vital member of the COA team. He makes, takes an active role in the safety and maintenance of the vehicles, passes on any concerns or inputs from his passengers to the staff, and participates on the transportation subcommittee within the Council on Aging Board. 
which is best described as a kind and compassionate Millis resident with the great attention to detail, and he's the ideal recipient of the 2024 Lansing Millis Service Award. appointments on time is important. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we chose a clock so that all of the, the residents that receive your wonderful service will be uh, there on time. That's very nice. Thank you so much. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Would you like to give us a couple pictures? Sure. Yes. Yeah, would you like to select board too? Okay. Yeah. designate him. Okay, make it. Okay, just to follow through with that, I move that the board designate Richard Pasklinski as the winner of the 2024 Lansing Miller Service Award. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right. All right, what number was that again? That was 107, so we're on 108. Oh, there we go, okay, 108. Already announced the carnival. I missed the carnival. You missed the carnival. Oh. It's all right. I wrote it down for you. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, moving along to the next item. Um, a vote to petition the state legislative delegation to file petitions for special act. Mike, what do you got? Madam Chair, three voters at the spring annual town meeting voted to approve Article 2, uh, which authorizes the select board to petition the general court to adopt a home rule petition. Specifically, the petition would expand the powers of the town administrator by authorizing him or her to approve all payroll and expense warrants. Enclosed in your packet this evening is the actual home rule petition, which has been drawn up and approved by town council as the form. Uh, I'm recommending that the board vote to approve and sign the enclosed home rule petition so that we may submit it to the general court for their action. Um, I will say <laughs> that the um, numbers. This process does take some time, and based on the experience uh, I've had with these types of uh, uh, home rule petitions and the uh, schedule of the legislature, I'd expect that this petition um, could be signed into law probably as soon as in the summer of 2025, so about a year from now. Wah -wah. But does that mean that, <laughs> yes, it that does. means that I've beaten you two <laughs> weeks in a row? Are you serious? It does not take effect. It has to be approved by the state legislature. Yes. But I haven't gotten any. I've gotten those, and I've beaten you every time. Yeah. <laughs> we both did the last one. Did you? We yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have the meeting, but I had My that. Oh, God. Doing it as a matter of pride. If I didn't beat it, okay. <laughs> Can we get a motion? I move that the board approve and sign the home rule petition as presented for submittal to the general court. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. What time we got here? 7.50? Oh. Yeah, we're late. That's okay. We're a little bit late. Um, next on the agenda is an affordable housing discussion. Candace, you ready? I am. Mary Ellen, so our board member, Mary Ellen is going to speak. Okay. And I'm just going to give you guys copies of the slides. 
Thank you. Her name is Laura. Thank you. Thanks. Can we get this um, electronically also? Yes, yes. I yeah, don't we'll store paper well. Sure. <laughs> it just disappears in the file. Yeah, we're ready. Um, good evening. I'm Mary Alice I'm a member of the Melissa Can you Authority. Hold the mic in. Try to aim a little bit. Yeah. Thank you for giving me this time to discuss affordable housing in Millis. The Millis Housing Authority has been discussing for several years the need for more subsidized housing in our town. My goal tonight is to clarify a few concepts about public housing and present data to support the need for the construction of more housing for low-income families in Millis. They can't hear you in the back. Just yeah, just pull, the, just pull the mic closer, I think. Yeah, pull the mic closer to you. I've got all kinds of things. I cannot. Um, all right. <clears throat> that's better. That's, that's going to be better. No, that's that's, that's going to be better, I think, Karen. Go okay, ahead and try. The Millis Housing Authority oversees 83 units of public housing. 10 units are for families, and 73 are for seniors and residents with disabilities. I'm sure we can agree that it is important for children to feel secure in their housing. Close to one in five children in the Millis Public Schools are members of low-income families. This means that over 200 children live in homes that are always one small disaster away from having to make choices between food, health care, and housing. And the sad fact is, some of our Millis families do have to seek emergency or temporary shelters. 10 family units is not enough. Safe, affordable housing for our seniors and people living with disabilities is essential. The seniors in our town are the people who have contributed in every way to make our, our town the great community that it is. As you can see from the chart, nearly 25% of our town is composed of residents who are over age 65 or living with a disability. For our neighbors who are in these two categories and also have low incomes, the challenges of living in poverty can be very difficult. And consider this, of the 73 housing authority units for seniors and disabled residents, only three are handicapped accessible and none of our family units are handicapped accessible. The number of applicants for the Millis Housing Authority for October of 23, which is the data I had, <laughs> is shown on the slide. Um, I'll take you, give you a minute to take a look. For a limited number of openings at any given time, the need always outstrips availability. That data is from CHAMP. I would like to take a minute to, to discuss two different types of affordable housing. One type of affordable housing sets the maximum rent for a resident based on a percentage of the renter's income. In another type of affordable housing, the maximum rent is based on the percent of the area median income, which is determined by HUD. Let's take a look, a look at the significant difference in cost between these two forms of affordable housing. I think I went too far there. Rents for public housing are subsidized and are approximately 30% of the household's gross adjusted income. Unlike other types of affordable housing, the rent for the housing authority units change if a household has an income change. For example, if a family, mem family member loses a job, their, their rent would decrease accordingly. This creates housing stability for our residents. The other form of affordable housing that we will address tonight is based on area median income. And I will not get into the weeds here because there are many weeds. The AMI of a region is determined by HUD and among other purposes, it is used to determine if applicants are eligible for subsidized housing programs. Each year, HUD releases the maximum rent that can be charged in each metropolitan region. This image, and not a great one I know, um, shows Norfolk County outlined in red. The median income in our area is determined by HUD to be $141,300. From this chart, we can see that to qualify for low-income housing, a household can earn no more 
than about $113,000 a year, which is 80% of our AMI. To qualify as very low income, households can earn no more than $70,000. Here is an example that will clarify the difference between rent based on income and rent based on AMI. I'll, this is the one slide I will read. Consider a family with an income of $56,600 a year. If the family rents a two bedroom affordable apartment in a development based on 80% AMI, the maximum rent the landlord could charge would be about $2,500. If the same family rents a two bedroom unit in public housing with rent based on their income, they will pay about $1,400. Affordable housing based on AMI is an important part of our affordable housing stock, no question about it. But for some families, this type of affordable housing just isn't affordable. What would be the um, financial impact of construction of additional housing authority be on our town? Because of incentive programs offered to developers by the state and federal government for creating low-income housing, the financial commitment to the housing to the hosting town is minimal. Our Community Preservation Fund, mandated by the state, has money that is earmarked for housing and could be used for our project. However, the most important contribution from the town would be the possible donation of town-owned land. This has been done in other communities and has led to successful construction of family and senior disabled housing for residents. If a donation of town land is to be considered, the necessary town boards in consultation with the state would select an appropriate property. The question of transferring land to the housing authority would be voted on at town meeting and then put to a vote at the polls. If the town approves this transfer, requests for proposals would go out for bid. If we get that far, input by town residents will be essential in all of our decisions regarding the construction of new housing units. The Millis Housing Authority Board is painfully aware that people in need of rent-based housing are being waitlisted. We know that there is a need for more affordable housing. I hope this presentation has clarified the reasons why we are seeking to build more truly affordable housing in Millis. Any questions? That's a good question. <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the board, Craig? No, I think that I've been following it and I understand the need for it, obviously. The, the need is obviously there. Um, I think it's moving on to solutions is what we're working on now. Erin? Same. Anything from the public? Any comments? Um, I want to just say a, a couple of things. We've been talking about this for a while, as you know, and there are two, two properties that we're currently looking at. Um, one is the Vaughn property on Village Street on the kind of Medway line, and the other one's the Cassidy property across from the soccer fields um, from Oakville, Oak Grove Farm. Um, we just had those two properties flagged for wetlands because they're both wet in different ways. The Vaughn property has a river running through it and the Cassidy property has quite a few pieces that are um, uh, conservation limited um, and there's wetland around it. But we just had them flagged and we are just now um, determining how much upland we have on both pieces. So hopefully in the next um, few weeks, month, so, um, we can bring that to this board first and then to the community and, and move forward with this because I for one believe that uh, it's time. Yeah, I looked over those reports that were sent out and uh, without having a background in real estate, couldn't really follow them. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to having them explained yes. exactly how much yes. development can be done in each site. Yep. Well, you had mentioned, um, Candace, that you, we were, we, we were talking, just to remind everybody, right. we were talking about like 43 units or something. Wasn't that like the sweet spot? So we were. So with tax investment, you know, those tax credits, anything like that, 43 is 
that sweet spot. But if we can get more affordable units, yeah. of course, it's more beneficial to the town. I think right. when we had met and we discussed it, I think the index right now for affordable units in Millis is right about three point. I think it's like 3.5, where we write about there. We're about 3.6. Yeah, 3.6. So you want to be right around 10%. Yep. And when you're looking at affordable housing within your town and the commitment that you're going to have, in a lot of other developments that are kind of outside the realm of what we're proposing, many of them have limited units within those developments that are, that are going towards the index within the town, whereas the ones that we'd build would be 100%, 100% 100 of those units would go towards that index. And the affordability measure in the way we establish those rents, which Mary Ellen had touched on, is that we have a, a, a standard formula, which again, we won't get into the weeds about, but it makes it truly affordable. So if somebody's income goes up or down, that rent is set so that they can afford to stay there and maintain it. It's not just based on that area median yep. income, so yep. that it's not that high. Yep. So, um, yeah, to answer that, okay. it was 43 is the the sweet spot. Right. If you can figure more, again, those that 100 percent of that goes towards that right. um, index of percentages of affordable. And didn't housing. you also say, if I remember correctly, which I don't remember anything anymore, but <laughs> here we go. Right with me. <clears throat> didn't you say that? Um, the acreage, what was it that could support that? Didn't you so like we're, we're at 45 units in Medfield yep. we're building. So just for comparatives, we're in that process. We've already done the RFP. We've already measured it out. We have the land there. And so we have 45 units that will be built. And it's roughly like right around two acres yep. for that. I, We've also accommodated like every, as will be the case, um, every residential perspective, input, town input, as far as like the borders, beautifying the frontage, putting in the trees, watching out for lighting, traffic reports, all of those things that make sure that the, the structure itself is very conducive to the area that it's being, yep. that it's being developed in. Okay. Yeah. And in Foxborough, I did that as well when I was there and we had acreage there. They're actually building more, but it was about 90 units there. Okay. Uh, come on up. Paul Simpson, 52 Island Road. Um, our property uh, butts Cassidy Field. So I just had a couple of questions on sort of the, the process of the wetland study. So when this came up at last town, uh, the select board in December, I think one of the decision points was having to try to come up with the money for the study. So I'm just uh, wondering, you obviously came up with the money because the studying is being done. What's the cost for the study? Okay, you're calling it a study. It's it's not so much a study as just a delineation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was it? A couple of grand? Uh, I think for both properties combined, it was around twenty four hundred. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Um, how how is the how is this evaluation or delineation being? What's the criteria? Um, you know, I mean, most of us are well versed in this. So, what kind of defines what a wet, wetland area is? I've seen the flags, and, you know, and I, I saw you and Dan, so um, I'm just wondering kind of what the criteria is. Well, I'm not a botanist, Yeah. Right. but the person that went out and put the flags is a botanist. Oh, okay. So he goes out and he's trained to, uh, to, to identify a wetland. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Thanks. I mean, there are, it's not an exact science because there are some that might think that this this particular grass is a wetland grass, so they may move the line a little bit this way. And then there are some that may be less strict, so they may move the line this way. Um, to my knowledge, the one we picked is kind of like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So um, <coughs> that's just the first start of this process. Gotcha. Um, and then when, the, when this delineation is done, is there a written analysis that will be available to the public? Well, we have, uh, right now, we have uh, a plan that shows the flags on it. But again, we haven't um, matched it up yet to make sure that we think it's um, complete. Okay. So we're in that process. Yeah. And, and this wetlands delineation won't, I mean, there, there are other factors that are going into the determination of 
you know, what potential site's going to be chosen, right? It's not just the wetlands that's going to determine. Well, no, we've discussed, we discussed that a little bit before in terms of, you know, the location making the most sense. And right. it sounded like Cassidy made the most sense when we discussed it in but terms of location. And we're, we're not entirely there no, yet we're not either. No, we didn't, no. Down, we didn't vote on anything. Votes, we haven't so. done anything with yeah, that. There's a lot. This is just, this is just the initial um, um, st study, I would call it, I guess, just to see what we have, right? Do we have feasible. Right. We have two pieces of land um, that uh, are potential build sites, like anything. But because if they, if neither one of them had a had a puddle on them, we wouldn't have to do this. Right. But the very first thing you have to do, particularly with Cassidy, because it's like 50 acres, is just to see what you what you have and where it is, and is it contiguous? And so you're going to look at both pieces and see what makes the most sense. But this is the very, very beginning. And it goes, it's not us. Yeah. We present. It goes to town meeting. Right. OK. So right. Thank that's you. what I got. Yep, thank you. All right. Come on up, Joyce. Thank you. <laughs> Joyce Boyardi, 206 Orchard. Um, as far as the lands go and the affordable housing goes, does, is, does the town donate the land? Is that how it works? Yeah, the town would donate, the, give the land to the state. The state would then build, work to build the property. We don't have any cost of construction. Okay. Yes. That's a, I just thought or that would be important for people to realize. Yeah. Yes. It would go would through do a whole it. legislative process yeah. in that if, if it were to happen, it would go through a legislative process of transfer. Is there a preference of pr locations? So it would make, is in the discussion. I actually think it's a little early for that. It still. is, yeah, for sure. I think we should wait and find out what's possible before we start going down a right. wish list of what Correct. we would Correct. like to have. People are going to overreact, Joyce, if we yeah. start talking oh, I know. prematurely. Oh, <laughs> Joyce, I know. Facebook is blowing up as we speak. I yeah. agree, I know. Okay, I'll just tell so you everybody. Know. <laughs> um, no, I, I was just curious about how the land appropriation goes. I didn't, I didn't know if it, was a, if it was a purchase or if the state takes it over. We Well, obviously, if we have land, right, um, to no cost, this, the, the, the best thing would be for the town to give, give it, gift the land. Gift. Yes. And then who takes care of the cost of the building of the pieces? So the state and the developer would take okay. care of that. And okay. no, no cost to the else. town. Nope. Yes. It nope. would not be any cost to the town. And do you have a set developer that you work with all the time, or it, it would, goes out to bid? It would go out to bid. It would be a public bid process through an RFP. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think I answered all the questions. <laughs> or I asked all the questions that TV land people want. I don't think so. Kathy's in line. <laughs> Just a reminder, everyone, you get and Candace, to make sure you're at the mic. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Many yeah, we not that clear. voice, sorry. So and I do apologize forward, yes. to the public. Okay. I've lost my voice. It's been touch and go for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Good to see you again, hey, Kathy McKenna, 78 Island Road. Um, good to see you in the center seat there, Madam Chair. Huh? Do I look good? Well, I said it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, do you want to run by for us the exact process of how to is it the town meeting vote first, or do they prepare a plan first? Is it two-thirds majority? Perhaps uh, you skimmed by it, if you could be a little more detailed. I have, Kathy, I have no idea. Mike, do you have any idea? Uh, I can speak to the vote. I think votes require two-thirds. Like, yeah, no, we can't hear you in the back either. Majority yeah. for any two -thirds. of, of uh, town property. So it would be a two-thirds town meeting vote. Um, it would not require... Um, you know, an RFP or an auction process because the town would be gifting the land to the state, so that, that would be exempt. Um, as far as the process on the state side, I would have to defer that to the, the housing authority director. But um, from a process of the town, it would require a town meeting vote, uh, two thirds vote. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned that there were some documents, Mr. Uh, Clerk, that you've seen some. Is there there, if you've study. seen it, I mean, yeah. is that public information? We can it's been around? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll post it. Yeah. It's really important that yeah. you be real transparent on things yeah, there's no here on in. To be. I just it popped through and we'll get what it posted. Do, what documents? Well, maybe it only came to me because I was scared. It was just the, uh, <laughs> 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 it was just the 
then it wouldn't need to be posted. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. And perhaps the plan that was flagged also? Yeah, I'm not sure I even have any of this yet, because I, I haven't mm. even, it was just done uh, a just couple, very recently. Yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, but then we sent him back out to take another look, and that just came in, hot off the presses. So it, it's, yeah, we can I'll get something, get yeah. I'll get everything online as soon yeah. as it, we get a look at it. So it's just the first step, Madam Chair, is just donating the land, and then the RFPs come in? We don't know what's going on there once the town, if the town supports the transfer. We won't know what's going in before we vote for the transfer through the chair. Oh, no, I think, I have no idea, but wouldn't we? We'd have a general idea of what we were going yeah, to we, do. We you know. can never not be like fully, you can't be fully specific before you know exactly what you're looking at. And again, with general no. conversation, correct? No, but people need to know how many units are going so in. We, so I agree with that, but I mean, you Right. Say give or take a couple of those units. Okay. It's, in being fully transparent, you want to make sure that you're saying this is what we're feeling. So yes, we're feeling 40 units, and we're or we're feeling 45 units, and we've speculated that that would be. You then have to go through that process, make sure they're going to fit on that land. Is the land compliant? How are we going to go about this? And then that all moves forward, but we would absolutely stick to those guidelines okay. once that's established. And then again, those would all go through the town process, all yes, of those meetings, zoning, planning. I get that, but we yeah. would need we would need a not more than number. Oh, correct, and and that is true. Okay. I just mean, for somebody, in many cases, people are looking for very specific I get that. things, and you don't want to upset nope. the apple the apple cart, for lack of a better term, tip it in saying we're going to do 43 and then if you do 44 that ships all bets are off you'd yes. say say between 45 and 50. i get that for sure it'll be a not more than yes a well, not more than. more importantly is the access where the runoff is going to go where the detention basins will go because as you know madam chair you have to keep the water within your acreage you can't drain yes. it yeah. onto everyone's property the way it is now so yeah this I would think be it's no different Kathy, this would be no different than any than any subdivision or any approval. It goes Correct. through all the same. Just because it's public housing doesn't mean it skips the line. I don't mean that. I mean, I think it's fair for the voters to know what's going in there before we support it. Absolutely. Agreed. And I will say, just, just for, so it, it gives you, I think, a little bit of confidence in that. Even at, so when the RFP goes out and then, you know, the design and development after we've talked about this, there are many, many, many meetings for full transparency on, you know, what that design looks like. We would go through meetings with each neighborhood, residents, town meetings, saying, you know, does this, does this fit where we're, where we're putting this structure? So there's a lot of different input to that. Yeah, I get it's that. It's not just yeah. a simple process. But it's, yeah. but it's fair to say we're not going to have design plans when this is discussed no, in town meeting. No, absolutely but, not. But the land itself would be designated for a certain amount of right. units. And then going forward in that process after RFP for design and developer, then we would start moving forward with that whole schematic but it would go through else. all the normal processes Absolutely. just like any other project so, so yeah. this yeah. isn't like mr madam chair this isn't like the uh proposal for the senior center which was already there this is agreed right okay. correct no this is something that is a work in progress with a lot of moving parts to get to that final final belt right okay uh is uh the deed that purchased this property was for municipal services um, through the chair, maybe the town administrator knows, is this considered a municipal service? Transferring property to the state? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Municipal service? The land was purchased for municipal services and then the other half was for conservation yes. use. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I we, would, could, well, we would certainly, I don't know. We certainly we, get clear. Yeah, right. Town council could you please get a written opinion regarding we'll that? Because we'll there's been some. Town okay. To get yeah. On that. I'm just wondering sometimes also not to not to cause anything, but maybe some independent town council once in a while would be helpful, rather than um, you know someone that's so close to the parties. Huh. 
Okay. And engineering also. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Are we good? <laughs> Very close to my lawyer at the Y. So I just okay. Him about once a week. I think we're good to move yeah. on. You think we're good? Yeah. All right. All right. We're not. Thank you. Thank All you right. very well, much. Thanks for Thank coming. You. No, that was great. Thanks for opening up conversation again. It was okay. great to be here. What do we got next? What's next? Line painting and crack right. ceiling. Doesn't Garth. get more exciting. I think his oh, no. Line. You've got enterprise funds. Oh, nice. Enterprise funds. Oh, really? Okay. Another presentation. Well, it's uh, just enterprise funds. Are we next? Yep. Yeah. Can you give me one second? Sure. I need a two minute recess. If you're getting food, bring it. I'm not getting food. Start. Speed it up. I'm going to start when I get home. <laughs> Craig, I, re I reminded everybody the transfer station is open Wednesdays at till 6:45. So you have time. I can't come on Saturdays. <laughs> go go on Wednesdays. There's no one there. I like seeing people. I'll tell you. Jim, really? Driving by the short. I, I drove down there last week. Looked at the salt shed. and said, "I wonder when that's coming up." And lo and behold, here go. it is. Here it is. <laughs> I did answer a question down there. The guy says, why did you make it out of concrete and metal? I said, it's salt. <laughs> yeah. Salt is bad yeah, with metal. <laughs> how old is that? I'm that thing. Yeah. I don't even. <laughs> yeah. It's quaint. Let's not call it old. Yeah. It's almost historic. <laughs> Let's do it quick, though, before the Historic Commission puts a sign on it. <laughs> Let's check the bad houses. Mm. We'll take care of it. Mr. Varga, can you hear us? Peter, can you hear us? I can, yeah. How's the audio on your end? Okay. We're good. Yeah, we can hear you. That's good. Just checking. She'll be back momentarily. And you're just going to share your screen. Perfect. There was no parking downstairs, too, by the way. I'm behind the building. Okay. What's next? Thank Go you, ahead, Madam Jim. Chair. Sorry. This, uh, this presentation, um, this is part of our stormwater uh, permitting process, and this is something that it has to be presented before we submit our June to the state. Our, our project goals. Um, so what we're going to do, Peter's going to do a presentation tonight on stormwater uh, changes, and that's due to the permit process. And it's nothing to do with rates or anything like that. It's changes of how things will be built in the future. Um, what we would look for tonight is a approval for us to send this off to review th uh, to town council. The uh, Planning Board, the ZBA, the Board of Health, they've all seen this two or three times. We were actually going to present this because there may, need, there may need, need to be a town meeting vote for this because it could be some charter changes, but that's up to town council to make that decision. You three are the commissioners of the uh, stormwater, uh, and you could maybe it, to act and uh, put these projects in place. Um, the Enterprise Committee looked at it at their last meeting, over several meetings, and they voted in favor of um, moving this process along for you to uh, make, make the review. So I'll let Peter talk about it, and he'll do a presentation. I think the letter was first, and then uh, he has a slide deck. Peter does a great job in keeping us in compliance. Um, this year has been a little diff, not difficult, but it's been a, a lot of testing um, that and we're well into compliance for this year. So go ahead, Peter. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate the introduction. Good evening, everybody. <coughs> Good to see you all. Um, yeah, just a very short presentation, <coughs> sort of describing the context of um, what we did um, uh, this year and um, subsequent years leading up to this. This is actually the third um, update. So this is part of the stormwater and that permit that the town is under. 
and we've been in the field for mine records um, over the years in the past. Um, the first update was to remove that, you know, have the town and town have authority to, to remove the legal connection to the storm system. And the second update was around um, making sure that construction projects, you know, do not pose additional risk to water quality, storm water quality. This update is about, um, uh, you know, a, a, basically it was a, a relatively light review of ordinances involved in the built environment and how to decrease impervious surfaces and optimize um, green infrastructure. Um, so we went relatively light on our review. Um, we, um, we use standards that were already vetted by the regulatory agencies and examples from other towns that have you know effective um, regulations in place. We use checklists that are existing and um, are are known guidelines for doing this type of work um, to run the review. And in the you know the bottom right hand corner, you can just see an example of uh, a traffic circle design with certain measurements and standards on it that. Um, you know, we just use it as an example. Um, there's a checklist that we use that has these standards that, that can provide effective ways to reduce impervious surfaces, encourage infiltration, and optimize um, opportunities for green infrastructure. So these are the codes that we, we actually looked at. Um, we suggested revisions on only three this time around, the zoning bylaw, the land um, subdivision rules and regs, and the stormwater management regs, Article 1. We did a sweep of uh, the remaining codes just to ensure there's no, there's no conflict. Um, and uh, we looked closely at the, the stormwater management regs, Article 2, stormwater management utility bylaw, and um, stormwater utility credit manuals as part of this. And I believe Kleinfelder, before my time at the company, was involved in those efforts. So this was sort of the, the body of documents that we that were part of our, our review and doing this exercise. Um, the these are the, the nature of the of the suggestions, the suggested red lines. And really for the land use subdivision rules and regs, it was looking for locations where we could enhance the language that would help optimize the minimization of impervious, which is a theme throughout the entire review. Um, and that was focused around adding some flexibility in street design and width, um, traffic circle standards, that small example I just showed you on the previous slide, but you know, encouraging islands within the traffic circle that would, would, would serve as green infrastructure and be, be designed to, to treat runoff, um, and then to allow permeable pavement options when, when appropriate, when the application for that kind of surface is, is appropriate. Um, allowing curb cuts um, enable stormwater to flow from the pervious surface to the green infrastructure. So um, that's an effective tool, and we, you know, we look for areas where we can enhance the language to encourage that. Um, for the zoning bylaw, again, it was also around decreasing in purpose area, allowing driveways to be permeable um, pavement in where appropriate, um, making flexible parking size requirements to, to try to reduce um, concrete and again you know for those visual relief islands design them in a way that they can double as uh, stormwater treatment um, structures really um, and then for the stormwater management regulations article one just require a narrative on low impact design uh, for developments and then refer to some new standards that are um, being drafted and published this year uh, the stormwater handbook is one of them there will be a new MS4 permit coming out this year. We're all anticipating that. It was supposed to come out this summer. They're saying that it'll come out in the fall. So we'll be looking out for changes in that. But the handbook uh, updates are um, largely reflecting the MS4 permit. We just wanted to make sure that you know the, the regulations are, um, are also referring to, to what the handbook is saying this year. So this is really the nature of the updates. We, we tried to go light on, on the red line and not include too, much, too many revisions. 
Uh, these are some photos just showing design concepts and implementation of some of the features that are encouraged in, in the regulations and the enhancements of the language that we chose just to give you an idea and a flavor for, uh, for this type of um, best management practice. Really, these structures are designed to capture and infiltrate stormwater before it enters the storm drain system. So it's a way to actually protect the storm drain system um, with the construction of these. Any questions so far? Good. No, we're good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, you know, the, the way the permit is written, there's a lot of moving parts to it, a lot of connecting parts. Um, so, you know, there are um, strict phosphorus requirements due to Millis's location in the headwaters of the Charles River. The types of structures that are encouraged um, and the enhancements that we, we made are really addressed some of the phosphorus uh, needs of the town. Um, and we're now doing some other measurements um, elsewhere to account for uh, the contribution of structures to remove phosphorus and get the town's points um, against its phosphorus requirements. And we're, we'll be updating that um, this year. I went over some of those details earlier today with Jim. Um, infiltrating stormwater also is a wonderful flood mitigation technique um, to be able to soak that water in and really um, improve situations where there is, you know, urban flooding. Um, and then, of course, in general, um, improving water quality. Millis is blessed with having a lot of water resources um, in its town. Um, you know, it's in the best interest in the long term to maintain the highest water quality possible. And then the greening of the town as well. Um, from those parking lot photos, you might get an idea that, you know, it's, it's, it's an effort to to introduce green infrastructure wherever possible, seek new opportunities to do that, and the co-benefits associated with that as well. So, um, so for for next steps, I think Jim, you know, kind of summarized what what the requirements are, um, and I, I have those listed here. Um, but you know, I defer to to the town to to navigate that, and we're we're here to support. So um, that's the last slide I had for my overview of this. Um, there was also a memorandum that we wrote, which actually features the red lines. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that was distributed, but I can certainly distribute that after, if not. So Madam Chair, I'll ask Mr. Duffy if he'd like to come up and speak. I mean, he probably read the document more than any one of us. Uh, all the red line, uh, if you want to. He's part of the Enterprise Committee and we do meet once a month, and this has been a topic for several months for us on this. Uh, Jim Duffy, 343 Exchange, uh, also a member of the uh, Enterprise Committee. Thank you. Um, document's pretty comprehensive with respect to the red lines and the various bylaws and zoning and whatnot. It makes sense. I mean, the whole point is don't flush water into the Charles River or the sewer or the collection system collected on site. I, you know, I'm not a construction expert, but I think the, not a huge cost impact to doing this design as you're building things. The thing is that various boards have to understand they've got a part of understanding this and ultimately governing it. There's certainly the planning board, conservation commission, and in some of this stuff somewhere is a delineation of probably who has to have control. We didn't get any feedback from those organizations, so that says they accept what what those delineations were as far as we're concerned. So, thank you. Thank you. So I guess what we'd be looking for, uh, you know, through the town administrator, if we, we need to send this off to town council, um, for a, for a review and would come back with his final recommendation. And if we may have to bring this to the November, which is already sounds like it's gonna be a pretty busy town meeting, um, you know, for a vote if, if needed. We, we just don't know that at this moment. And Madam Chair, I concur. I think, um, you know, unless the board has any other specific questions, the next step in this process would be to forward all this information to town council and for, um, administration, uh, if I follow the work with town council to determine 
um, if the changes are appropriate from a legal perspective and the necessary steps to uh, to adopt those for the town. Okay. Yeah. So there's no motion to be made. Yes, there is. Oh, there is. Got one. You got one. I've got one. All right, do it. I move that the board approve sending the stormwater regulations as presented to town council for comment as the next step in the town's review and acceptance process. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Unanimous. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Nice to see you all again. Nice Next time we, we'll, we'll make him come live. He, he was going to come tonight, right. but Should I told him he didn't have to. <laughs> if there's no more questions, I'll leave the meeting. Yep, we're set. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Okay, so the next we can whiz through these, I think. Am I yeah. next? You're still, still next. You're okay. still next. You, Jim. Next. Good. Um, so our next is uh, annual contracts for crack sealing and pavement markings. They're self-explanatory. Uh, they won't go into effect till July 1st for the uh, fiscal year FY25. Uh, we're asking for $25,000 for crack sealing. It's, you know, some of the roads have been paved. They need to be maintained. And what crack sealing is, it's just the heat that goes down with uh, rubber and it just keeps the roads lasting a little bit longer. There's a list of roads that we've already sent out. Um, and line painting is the center lines. This will um, pay for all the uh, new pavement that we're gonna pave this year. And hopefully we didn't do much pa uh, line painting last year because the budget was cut. So we try to cut, you know, each year we try to do a little to get it all done within a couple of years. The crosswalks and all that are done in-house. We do that all in-house, um, but there's still a cost to that. and we would ask that you approve um, $30,000 of that, which some of that's gonna come out of the, the budget and the um, paving that town meeting gave us in chapter 90. But you do have to vote for it because Lisa won't let me spend it. <laughs> I was just gonna add, Jim, uh, uh, Madam Chair, that this is through the uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council, which is the MAPC, and we are part of the Metro West Regional Services Consortium, um, which are many, many towns. I don't know, yeah. it was like eight towns. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's why we get such good pricing. So, so people okay. are aware. Right. Okay, so we have a couple of motions, right? Yes. Okay, let's do it. I move that the board approve the contract for crack sealing services with Seal Coating Inc. as solicited by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC, on behalf of the Metro West Regional Services Consortium for a period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025 at an amount not to exceed $25,000. Second. Okay, it's been moved and se seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Next okay. one. I move that the board approve the contract for paving pavement markings with K5 Corporation as solicited by the MAPC on behalf of the Metro West Regional Services Consortium for a period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025 at an amount not to exceed $30,000. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, so, and lastly for the DPW, yep. uh, the salt shed. Um, there, believe it or not, there are funds left over in the snow and ice budget this year. Probably for the first time in the 18 years that I've been doing it. Um, so right now, as of 6-30-24, we have $18,029.49. Last year, I think we had, we had no way near that amount, but it was there was still money left over we didn't need that. in last year. Um, so as I sent out, I mean, as part of the DPW project, we asked we we actually <coughs> put in for a new salt shed, and because of the cost, it was cut. You know, that's the bottom line. It, it was uh, well upwards of four to five hundred thousand dollars to re cut down, replace the one in place. So we decided to keep the one we had, uh, and structurally. The inside of the, the building is okay. Um, you know, someday we may have to look at enlarging it or building it another one someplace else of a little smaller size. But I think if you look at the um, the outside of the skin of the building, and I sent you pictures of them, mm -hmm. that it's starting to fall apart. Um, most importantly, if the last set of pictures I sent you was at the cemetery, and I think Ellen, you were on the committee when we yep. walked around there and. That, that building, we reskinned that, well, we say we. I didn't do any of it. Uh, the DPW crews, you know, reskinned that building. They put a new roof on it. Uh, you can see the window. Um, so it was all done within in-house. 
to have this building reskinned on, on the outside, you're talking somewhere of thirty, forty thousand dollars. Um, we believe that we can do it. Well, it's not we we believe. We know we can do it um, for a, a fraction of that. I would like would like to use nine thousand dollars of, of that eighteen thousand dollars. As you know, that we that money has to. It just goes right back into the general fund. To be honest with everybody, it can't be used to pave roads. It can't be used for line painting crack ceiling or anything else. If there's money left over in the snow and ice budget, the way it's set up, it goes back into the general fund. But speaking with the town administrator and the assistant town administrator, that we felt that this was a, a good use of this money. It, it's a salt shed. It's taking care of the salt that, that is the money that was uh, needed, well, that we use for it. So I don't know if there's any discussion on it or any questions. Um, I mean, I agree. This is money left over from not using salt, so we can put this money toward the future protection of the salt. It's very circular reasoning here. <laughs> I don't even have to squint to see this one. <laughs> Sometimes I have to twist myself around to get the logic, but this one's straight. Yes. And the salt shed is filled for next year, so I mean, it's full. Oh. I mean, it, it, it's, it's also with that. Um, so. Okay, Aaron, anything? Okay. I move that the board approve the salt shed restoration project as presented using $9,000 in available funds from the snow and ice account number 0142352-5530010. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Scott. Hang on, Jim. Yep. Scott Fusey, 411 Union. I just want to thank Jim and his staff because a lot of it gets done notice like Doing the, I've noticed the, the garage up at the cemetery. It's very nice. Now doing the salt shed in-house. A lot of work gets done in-house, and that's, that says a lot. So thank you to Jim and his staff and for taking the time to do it. it. It saves the town a lot. So thank you. Yes, duly noted. Okay, next we have uh, the social media. Is that, are we on the social yes. media policy? Yes. So... I don't know if we all know this, but the social media policy that I got is not the one, right. We haven't had, a, so we're trying to um, update our social media policy for town committees and boards, correct? Yes, select board appointed town and moderator appointed boards and committees. Okay. okay. It, it, will then be, it will then be for both is the plan. But. Okay, uh, however, the policy that we got last week is was condensed, and I have not had a chance to look at no. this new one, so I think we can take the next couple of weeks and look yeah. at it, and then we can yeah. comment. Yeah, yeah. the other one was mm -hmm. a little bit Not proposed. the Tuesday night meeting, but maybe the next one. Yes. <laughs> um, next regular meeting on the 24th, um, so the updated uh, yep. uh, policy, which is it's not... It's not as wide a, wide a net. It, yep. it, uh, this one focuses specifically on um, appointed boards and committees. So, yes. Um, and if there's any questions in the meantime, you yep. can certainly reach out to me with any questions you have. I have, I have a quick question. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> uh, Jim Duffy, 343 Exchange. I, I didn't get through the whole social media policy. So if it's obvious, if it's in there, great. But is this policy recommending that these boards have social media groups such that they can no, no, publish no, no, no. information to no, the town? This is town? how to. Uh, this is etiquette. This is what you shall not do. Yes. yes. Yeah. What you? Well, you might want to consider the former suggestion of <laughs> information the outflow. Social media sites no, for, and that's no. vetted so it oh. goes through one poster. No. <laughs> Right, the social media for the town comes from one source, and then, right, yeah. and then everything else is... Yes. Yes. Just so we're all <laughs> on the same page. Um, okay. So, okay. so the board, I mean, this is question tonight, the board doesn't need to take any further action on okay. this agenda item this evening. Okay. Good. Uh, next item. Is the next item the town meeting? No, nope. uh, select board goals. goals. Goal. Oh my goodness. Review of last year's goals, not right. creating this year's. Right. Did you get, a, get to take a look at it? I looked at it. What did you think? 
We came close on some. It's done a few, but <laughs> we wished we did. I thought we did come close. Aaron, and, you want to hit several? You but we came. To, yeah. Who wants to start? Well, you want to start at the top and work our way down? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Provide level service funding for all departments. Consider funding beyond level service for targeted departments. Should funding allow? Well, we tried that. <laughs> it did not pass voter intent, but we tried that. Yes. So I'm giving us a yes. We attempted. Yes. So I don't know how to score it, but I, I think we're close on, uh, we, we certainly had a plan, it didn't pass. Yep. Uh, plan to eliminate or replace funding for services that have been paid for to the HCA. We've done that with several, and we have another year. When this was written, I thought, I was under the impression that FY24 was the last year of funding, whereas FY26 will be the last year of funding. Correct, it's yeah. diminishing each yeah. year. FY25, I'm sorry, I thought that FY25 would be the last year of funding, right. not FY26. So I think we're on track for that one. We've taken care of the rec department. We've taken care of several others. So we are moving in the right direction. So anybody else has an opinion? Well, I'd like to make a comment. I'd like to make a comment. Because there's a misunderstanding uh, around uh, social media, and I get stopped all the time. Why, why did Millis um, put the HCA funds into budgets, right? That's the question. Why would any department or committee or whatever actually put the funding into their budget knowing that it had a, 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 an end and now you've got to wean yourself off of it? Well, I learned why. They did it because they were trying to comply with um, the statute. So the statute said that the funding, there had to be a nexus between the funding and the impact. Well, Millis was, as far as I know, the only town that actually tried to comply with that. And so they took pieces of the money, they put a little bit to the library to try to create a nexus, the library, so you have extended hours for kids to come in. You keep them off the street, they're not doing weed. You put some with the, the, the police officer embedded in the school. It's a, it's, a, it's a nexus. They did the right thing, is what I'm trying to say. If every town had done what Millis did, the post-community agreements would still be in effect. But they didn't. They took the money. They didn't try to make a nexus. They didn't try to prove anything to anybody. They got greedy. And some of the um, groups, like ComCan, said, hey, wait a minute. What, can I get an accounting of my money? And the town said, no, you can't. Not so our they, town. Not our town, <laughs> but other towns. They said, no, you can't. We took your money. We had an agreement. Screw you. So they, the group sued. They sued the town. And every one of them won. Every one of them. That was three years ago. Well, the CCC woke up and said, holy mackerel, nobody is complying, so we are getting rid of the HCA as it exists. I don't know if anybody knows that, but the HCAs were gone three years ago because nobody complied, and it was sort of a ruse. So the group started, stopped paying, and the town stopped asking. Now, I'm not going to talk about my situation, just to say that I honored my agreement because the town honored theirs. But the fact that they did it the way they did it, by putting it in the budget, which upset a lot of people because now the weaning is taking place and how are you going to wean, they tried to do the right thing. And I think somebody should explain that, so I'm explaining that to anybody that cares about where we are. Yeah. Anywho. And, and having been there when it first came out on the finance committee side, not the select board side, I, I, yeah, I think we all saw this coming on th th that there would be a day. And in a lot of cases, yes. the way we're approaching it, with the exception of the school resource officer and the police training, those are the big ones that are kind of hardwired in. Yep. It was a, they're going to be hard to replace. It was an attempt for the rec department to try 
a summer camp program and other programs yep. with the theory that if it's successful, you can apply for grants because now you have five years of history behind you to show how successful it was. Um, library hours, were, and not to diminish the library at all, but that was something that was put in that if we can't find a way, we cut back on yep. the evening hours two days a week. We go back to the old model, which wasn't terrible. It's not as good as it is now, but it's not like we're closing the library. So a lot of stuff, with the exception of the school resource yeah, office, are, are absorbable. But I mean, I said I didn't have to squint to see the connection on the salt shed. I had to squint occasionally on this one to so see the nexuses. So did I. But, but there, the intent was there. Yes. And, and, and it was a problem that's not a blindsiding us at all. We saw it coming, and yes. we're, that's why we put it in the agenda or in the goals, you know, last Stop for this weaning. year. Yeah. Yes. And that's why we're making efforts towards it. I'm just going to say that I am in three towns, and well, four actually, if you count the grow. And when I would have to, every year I have to uh, renew my license, and I would have to ask the town, give me an accounting. Can I have an accounting, please? Okay. The only town. <laughs> The only town I got an accounting, an incredible accounting line item, was Millis. Um, the rest of them was a very, well, we used a little for this, or, or, or we haven't really dispersed it yet. Get back to me later. So I'm just saying that i um, very proud of the way this town, way before I got on the select board, um, handled the whole thing and is still handling it. That's all. Yeah, Carol is a stick. Enough of you. that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Next one: improve efficiencies by consolidating services with neighboring towns. Field maintenance, senior services, other departments as opportunities presented, and reduce reliance on outside consulting, especially in engineering. Um, we did have a meeting with a neighboring town to discuss consolidation of services. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else want to chime in on this? Well, we, we're, we're still talking to Medway about the library. Yep. That's hot off the presses. We are, um, I know we're, we're doing a lot with Medway with um, senior services, yep. um, reciprocal stuff, which is exciting. Um, and we're, we're doing more uh, together with the school department. Yeah, and Municipal I think and the school. fields are something that's going to be coming up this year pretty heavily. Yeah. And the senior services, I think that we've changed some of the tone, too, so that we can get some more interdepartmental. But I'm, I advocate keeping the field maintenance on for another year to try to finish that project. Yeah. Um, complete process of reallocating the direct indirect cost for enterprise fund. We did not complete. Um, we made a stab at it with the override again, adding one position. That would have improved it, but it didn't solve it. So um, I, I'd like a, accounting before Carol leaves about where we are with what's, you know, where, where we're missing, where we're not hitting, uh, you know, all those type of things. Okay. Fully loaded budget showing all sources and uses of grants not to be voted at town meeting. We got better at did it, we, Carol. I, we did, did. we do it? Not, not entirely. Okay. We didn't get it all from the school, but on the municipal side, we got it all. Okay. And we did have references to grants and other sources, but we didn't get it clear enough accounting. Okay. We were able to pull the HCA, well, yeah, put, we, we were able to clean that up so we could see it better, yep. just in time for it to go away. Yeah. But <laughs> we, we got it's that okay. done. Um, I think we made some headway on it. Um, the grants were quite clearly presented in each of the uh, budgets that we saw, Fire, Police, Council on Aging. Okay. So they, they did show them quite well. The biggest win, though, Ellen. Oh my God! Yeah. This, this is, is the it big right one. here. Charter change to allow town administrator and finance director to approve the warrants in place of the select board. That's the one I'm the most excited about, yeah. as you can tell. It'll be during Aaron's term. So I keep know. Signing. <laughs> that was disappointing, but that was a win right there. Yeah. For everybody. And I'm going to keep beating you to sign. Okay, now. go okay. ahead. All right. Somebody else want to take enterprise funds? I always like the financials. <laughs> sure. Um, enterprise funds, sewer, investigate options to expand sewer capacity. And we, we have talked about this. We've yeah. Speaking of that, Jim, can you come up just for a second? I'm so glad you're here tonight. Can you give me a little, just a couple of minute thing? Are you meeting once a month? Um, Probably 11 out of 12. Okay. okay. Um, and have you, 
I gave you guys a list of things. Have you looked at that list? Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Um, we need to go back and re-review it. Um, specifically, you know, sewer capacity. Well, so there's been only one yeah. project yep. that's new. Everything, there's been nothing new. Agreed. So, in fact, we just, Mr. McKay, yeah, go on. It's okay. Anyway, so we just had this discussion of reviewing the spreadsheet, which actually is a very valuable tool. Yep. Because some of the things that were in reserve have actually started to get built and coming online, so therefore the reserve capacity can diminish. And well, our, our, yeah. yeah, so we're not holding 110 gallons. We're now right. with yep. whatever, 60, yep. right? Yep. So what we want to do this year is sort of backtrack from, okay, what, what, what's our real capacity? What are we using? What's in the, the works? And therefore, how much more growth could we actually yes. mm -hmm. take on before we get to capacity? Yes. But then that brings up the other issue of at some point, do we need to, well, we need to understand that someday we'll get there. So therefore, we need to consider what do we do to really stretch that out, such as large developments, perhaps having on-site packet treatments or something. And there's that's a big discussion that's going to come up because, yeah. you know, there's going to be a lot of unhappiness and no matter what number you pick. And I think we'll have to solicit, you know, what sort of makes some sense for when we might but actually. But did we ever do anything to determine what, what the what the right mix is, um, septic versus sewer? No, we I haven't. Know, right? Is that like a thing? It gets to be a thing in that you delay getting to capacity. Yes. By defining again what project types might have septic. Yeah. But there's very little onesie twosies that are getting built anymore. Okay. Right? It's all 40B or it's going to be MBT3A or it's going to be, right. uh, you know, uh, affordable housing. They're all, they're all big. That's right. right? So anybody can, no one has to hook up to sewer as far as I understand. So if somebody wants to come Correct. before a single family house on a single plot of land and they want to put a septic system in, then that goes before the Board of Health. And to my knowledge, they're not going to deny that unless there's some reason to, right. to, to deny it. Okay. Right? So the big issue is really understanding, you know, what on-site treatment might be viable and that are, what's the gateway size. And then size. also identifying the pieces in town that are big enough to, are there any left? I don't, you know what I mean? Buildable stuff? I have no idea. Well, I really think all the good yeah, well, that's gone. a good point. And I actually had that same conversation with Mr. McKay recently. He, he says there's some, but not a lot. Right. But, you know, if you knock down a bunch of stuff in a right. certain zone, then you can build all kinds of things coming down, coming down the pike, right. right? And I know Stony Brook apparently is talking about yep. some, some add-ons or something like that. But okay. uh, um, unless you can build on stilts. All right, and we did make the change to the uh, sewer bylaw early in the term, didn't we? Or did we do that last year? Last year. Last year, all right, mm -hmm. solved <laughs> Need to update it? Yeah. There's nothing to update. There's only the one hookup. The yeah. Oh, uh, there's nothing really to update. We wanted to update it and update it and update it, but there's nothing to update because there's only been one hook on and it's right. already been accounted for. Right. So we have the new bylaw piece, not the bylaw, but the new guidelines we wrote two years ago, yep. and it hasn't been a reason to review. Right? No. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So, so over the course of the year, there was one uh, construction guidelines that got approved by the select board. I'm looking for, with Mr. McKay, there's supposed to be another one that actually allows PVC pipe. He thinks it. Oh, right. Oh, did you I'm not that. sure I went to the select board. It did. I, did it? Did it? Yeah, I think it we did. did that. Yep. Did it get we approved? approved it. I didn't see yep. it in any so minutes or, no. all right. Yes. So we're good with that. Yes. We did, okay. right? Great. I know we talked about it. If it, if it made it here, we approved it because we're all in favor of it. I'm not convinced yeah. it did. So we yeah. approved, <laughs> we approved an exception for a certain individual. Right. I don't remember if we approved. 
let's get I have to ask Jim if you're yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm not convinced it got here. There was. I think you're right. I sent a letter to Jim the select board. It, though. Yeah, we Jim should did want it. So. I don't think it ever got on. The, I, I I've looked. Hope Jim, ask him. But tell him. We he can put he it on thinks it was, that. but he I don't. It was not convinced it was. So we'll go clarify that. I don't remember. I know. But there was a number of updates. Yeah. The man that was here. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was a because we're going exception. to approve the whole policy right after. Right. That. <laughs> right. All right, good one. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Inside I hint, know. I think if it comes forward, there's a good shot it'll be approved. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. Already, yeah, so <laughs> okay. So the next thing was water, securing all available grants and legal settlements for PFAS yeah. remediation, which doing? is we're doing good. Good, um, right? Still um, actively working with our special legal counsel on um, pursuing um, settlements with the <laughs> PFAS manufacturers. Um, okay. So it's, that's on the Okay, fun stuff. And then we have Enterprise Committee meet quarterly with the Enterprise Committee to discuss the status of projects, which I don't believe we have done. Um, I, I would I feel as though this was a nice update, but no, we have not had targeted meetings no. quarterly. No. Okay. So that's something we'll no have to pay some there. attention to. I know. There hasn't, been a, big, there yeah. hasn't been a big yeah. reason, but. But they have presented on the. We'll keep up. PFAS and the. Uh, mm -hmm. others, right. And the stormwater. Yeah. Okay. Number three. I'll keep going, I guess, Please. for so, now. All right. Improved town infrastructure. Continue to provide significant funding for road and sidewalk program, which we do. Yep. Um, investigate uses for town-owned land. We actually just talked about that. Yep. Um, and that's ongoing with a number of these items. Um, improve software and online resources for well, town departments. Just one quick oh, question. Go Sorry. Back. Yep. Lansing Millis. Do we ever get any money? Uh, my last contact um, with the state was that they would let us know by the end of June. Woof. So originally. 2024. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm just so checking. Very long time. I'm just checking. Yes, by yeah. the end of a June. <laughs> uh, I agree, Ellen. It's been a long just time. Just for a reminder, this involves the um, the governor's uh, I know. bond bill, and the governor every year, uh, the governor's office uh, determines which items are put forward for funding, and we've had been actively uh, lobbying uh, our state delegation and the governor's office to try to get the funds into the mic I don't think they can hear you back. So I will certainly I will certainly uh, be able to let you know. I'll keep updating you at every meeting. I'm hoping by the two weeks from now we'll okay. have a, a yes from them. That would we'll, be crazy good. I, I know. We'll let yeah. you know. We, we are also looking for 750000 in building repairs for this building right. that we so have asked for. So I ask Mike about every three weeks, I ask him if he's heard from the state. Yeah, th that, oh. both of those were, were put forward as Everybody part of the their bill. Yep. Um, but it's a $50 billion um, uh, bond. Only $3 billion of that gets released every year. So that's why it's, it's okay. pretty much competitive on a year-to-year -year basis. Even though money's been set aside for it, they don't tell us what year we're going to get. Okay. All right, those number three were... The Cree we're Comprehensive... Going. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we did that with... Yep. Um, that the little pieces the school that school that did the presentation yeah yeah for us um affordable housing we were just talking about that um, and the mbta zoning comes up tomorrow night yep the that board. comes yep. up at the planning board meeting yep. um improved software and online resources for town departments and committees we have we not are making, yes we are making yes progress on that um Uh, hope to have these TVs on in a, in a few weeks uh, mm -hmm. or in July at the latest. Um, also, we uh, had a meeting just last week about the e permitting um, mm -hmm. software. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also making some updates to our overall um, just town IT program. Mm -hmm. So that is ongoing. And, and I'm actually talking to a company that uh, does uh, capital planning. <laughs> okay, good. Um, they contacted the town as an email to the town, but I was looking for something at work as well. So mm -hmm. I just have been talking to them with... Yeah, I don't want to be a broken years. record about yeah. it, but I think we need capital yeah. planning software. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. not just yeah. a spreadsheet. Yeah. 
And, and the online permitting for the building department and that type of thing is, is we are moving forward on it. Hopefully a year from now we will at least have some of it really heartily in place. Mm -hmm. That's the hope. Well, we're starting the um, trial programs within a few months. Awesome. Which is exciting. Yep. Want to take the last part, Ellen? Uh, sure. Um, you mostly. Yeah. Increased <laughs> services for seniors. Well, I think you're doing a bang-up job yeah. <laughs> from what I'm hearing. She is. Um, you want to say anything about that, how we're doing down there? Give us a little update. You're here. Good evening. Thank you. Amory Gannon, Council on Aging Director. I'll be here a year in August, and oh, I think so um, yeah, it's wow. gone really quickly, and um, a lot of good work down there. A lot of, you know, we have a really nice group down there, people who are still actively engaged and keep coming and whatnot. You know, as for those of you who have visited, we've rearranged some of the space, we have things painted, organized our administrative area, and are looking to continue to bring more programs. We brought more exercise classes on. Kind of slows down a little bit July and August. Our instructors take a break as well. Um, but for the most part, you know, the board and, and everybody who's attending is, um, is happy with the improvements, and I keep getting lots of good suggestions and moving forward. So we look forward to more good work. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Exciting. Thank, Thank you. you. Since Anne-Marie has come on board, I don't think I have walked down there where she isn't in the middle of talking to somebody <laughs> or there isn't a whole bunch of people around. I've never, it's, it's a completely different place. It's a buzz. Yes. It's a buzz. We would call that a buzz. I like it. Me too. And I've been going there weekly. Oh yeah, yeah she's to doing visit the knitting, the knitting group. Are you knitting? Yep, yep. I enjoy it, and right. that everybody right. seems pretty happy down there. Nice. It's it's They're getting there. It's uh, it's very warm. Um, DPW to prioritize street. I don't know. I guess general beautification. Jim's not here. I guess they're doing all right. I think they're doing okay. okay. I've seen more of it. Well, we've also had the um, Norfolk County. Uh, yeah. Sheriff's Department helping out with some of yeah. that yeah. over the past year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's all good. Investigate Rail Trail. I I did. I actually spoke to the guy that owns the railroad track, and he told me to go pound sand. And uh, but he was very nice saying it. You know what I mean? He, I almost asked. I almost asked for directions. Uh, but it's a no-go, so yeah. I'm crossing it off. We will it's not investigate that no. further. No need to investigate. I can't believe that a private person can own a railroad uh, track, but they actually do. Um, create causes for celebration. Well, we just did a nice little thing from the senior center, which was awesome. Um, and we have the carnival coming up. Carnival, yeah. And, and fireworks for the first yeah, time. Yeah, they're, the they're doing a great We're job. We're getting some nice things done. And then at the end here, we are going to get to live streaming. I'm excited about yes. this. We yeah. are going to get to live streaming if it kills me. In June? No, no. but soon. <laughs> are we yes. doing that? By the end June. of the are year. We doing now? I mean, what do you consider live streaming? I caught that. <laughs> We're absolutely doing it because. Okay. Oh, okay. YouTube. You're going to be. Yeah. So here's the, here's the problem. First of all, nobody under 21. Um, um, watches cable. Watches cable. Nobody, they don't have cable. Cable's, cable's gone. I that's don't have cable. I'm well in excess of 20. That's number one. <laughs> number two, um, if you don't live in town, you yeah. can't. We have a lot of people that work in town hall that want to watch our town meetings, and they can't. We are going to have the capability of live streaming our town meeting, and we're going to extend it over to the school for graduations that people from around the country can see their grandkids and graduate. This is, I'm telling you, this is big. It's huge, Jerry. This is huge. So we're going to do it. And um, the cost is not that great. And we're already in the works. And I'm very excited. And Zoom about can be that. a little bit clunky. Yeah. Again, Everything. no offense if you own Zoom. But I, I I think it would be very helpful to have this, and it gives us more, it just gives people many different alternatives yes. to, try to try to stay in tune. Um, Listen, people, hard. I know all you lovely people love coming out here. And but you're still welcome to come. People don't come anymore. <laughs> they don't want to come, and I don't blame them. They want to sit in their homes, and they want to participate, and we need to facilitate that for everybody, and especially as we're getting older. I don't, I don't want to come, but... Here we are. Yes, you do. 
Any, uh, yes, I do. Of course I do. Um, so, um, and I'm also excited about the website improvements because yeah. I think they've been terrific. I know that, I, I have to tell you, I'm the one that has the most problem navigating. I come in here like a lunatic. I couldn't get onto a meeting last night. So now we have buttons, right? We have two new buttons. One is to look at old meetings and one is to look at current meetings. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with a lot of the goals that we've, we've, we've set and achieved. We also, I, I, we have the Town of Millis Facebook, which is kind of out of the horse's mouth, um, sending information out. And we will be having also Instagram finally. We're still a little behind the times, oh but God. we're getting there. But the Instagram will be the exact same as what's going on on Facebook, and we're going to keep trying nice. to expand that. Um, TikTok be part of I was just going to say pretty soon we'll have a TikTok I account. I don't know about TikTok, but... Oh, I was just going to say, well, they'll probably ban it here. Um, but all again, right. just trying to get the word out. I think we are. All right. So okay. are we... Setting new ones? Right. Next um, time. Do you want to do that next yeah. meeting? He hasn't meet. eaten. So, I mean, um, also, I don't have a list. Right, yeah. right, right. So, okay. It wasn't on my calendar. Okay. And I don't know if you noticed, so I had sent to the board all, and for anybody at home who wants to see select board goals, they are all online on the select board page on the website. You can see them from all of the years since I remember doing it, which is maybe it's since 16 or something. I don't yeah. know. They're all on there. I think that we should um, um, put fresh. together our own yeah. little list of what we're interested in, and then we'll We'll make a master list like we did before. All right. I'm zooming we'll in on the next meeting, weeks. FYI. Oh. I'll be right, on the cape. Oh, okay. Awesome. Do you want us to wait a month for your goals, or do you want to get them? You could um, send them in. No, can. I could still send them in. All right, good. It's fine. Uh, all right, what's next? Uh, discuss and vote on the date for the fall annual town meeting. Okay. Uh, and what's the date? So, Madam Chair, um, just to kind of explain to the public a little bit why we're not um, looking at the first Monday in, in uh, November, yep. which is a um, common date. Uh, this year, the, um, uh, the first Monday in November is the day before <coughs> the presidential election, uh, the state election. Um, speaking with our town election Sorry, staff. Sorry, my pencil's in the kitchen. <coughs> it's quiet. And speaking with our town election staff and uh, the town, you know, the town clerk, um, uh, there was a strong move to request that it not be held that week um, because of the the major undertaking that is the presidential election. Okay. Uh, so we were looking at the next week. Uh, the next week, Monday, November 11th, is uh, Veterans Day. That's a, that's a state and federal holiday. Uh, the next day, November 12th, um, our town council has his town meeting over in Norfolk. Um, and then the next night, the town moderator has a conflict on um, the 13th. So uh, after my discussions with all these folks, I'm recommending the board vote to set the date of the fall annual town meeting to Thursday, November 14th at 7.30 p.m. in the Middle High School Auditorium. Um, we proactively reserved the auditorium for that evening in anticipation of the board's uh, vote this evening and that that uh, we have locked in the uh, uh, the auditorium for that night. So I just have a quick question. Is it more important to have it on a Monday no matter when it is or not? Not not matter. particularly. We haven't always we, we moved it to Wednesday. We moved it we moved it last year also. I don't yep. remember the, the date. Before. Okay. I'm and you fine. Can't get pushed too far because of uh, you get tax close to reasons. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because you, you don't want to have it on Thanksgiving or anything. Not, no, not that, can. and and there's a process. <laughs> yeah, we there's a process <laughs> issue, whereby you you don't want to um, have your tax classification hearing and send it, send your that information to the state prior to the town meeting, um, oh. but you also don't want to um, <laughs> do that too late because we don't get the certification back from okay. the state in time to right. send out the tax bills in a timely manner. So we're kind of caught in about a two-week yeah, window, window to have um, 
the town meeting without causing any unfortunate ripples. Okay, so it looks like it'll be 11 14 24. I move that the board schedule the date of the fall annual town meeting for Thursday, November 14th, 2024, at 7 30 p.m. in the Middle High School Auditorium. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Great, thank you. Okay, now we're at. Oh, yeah. uh, we're jumping ahead to item, uh, item 118. Yep. Um, what so, is that? Um, Madam Chair, this is in regards to uh, this year's July 4th holiday um, falls on a Thursday. Yep. Um, oftentimes in the past, the select board has considered closing non-emergency operations um, at the municipal offices, library, and DPW on a Friday when a federal state holiday falls on a Thursday. Um, so I am um, recommending the board consider closing all non-emergency department operations on Friday, July 5th, 2024. Okay, any uh, discussion here? You good? Yeah, I'm that? good. Okay, okay, can we have a motion? I move that the board votes to close all municipal offices, the town library, and the Department of Public Works on Friday, July 5th, 2024. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Great, thank you very much. Okay, liaisons? I've got nothing. Huh. Craig? I do. I've got, uh, I went to the, uh, the MBTA housing meeting. Uh, yeah. And we're going to have a lot more information tomorrow night on that, but just the, the thumbnail of it. <laughs> the first plan, the MAPC presented, uh, remember we have to add 750 units. Yep. Their first plan added just over 3,000 potential units on a town that's got just around 3,200 units in it already. So we weren't too happy with it. We backed off that plan and we, um, and we did not vote on it at the Maytown meeting. We were trying to get that done. So. We're down to a much more reasonable, um, remember 750 is the minimum requirement. Uh, the plan that is being presented would be a potential between 800 and 850, so within 50 units. Okay. And there's a lot of setbacks and roads, so uh -huh. it's, it gives us enough of a buffer that the state should approve it. But remember, these aren't necessarily going to be built. Yeah. This is just making buy right zoning and none of it is going into neighborhoods. It's uh, the proposed plan is at the um, GIF factory, um, the open site right now, which most things could improve, and um, up at uh, Stony Brook. Those are the two areas that we overlaid. It's an overlay district so that um, things can be continue as they are, or if somebody wants to implement this new zoning, they could put it in place. <laughs> so it's not taking down any small neighborhood houses. We stayed out of all the areas where there were homes. We stayed out of all the attractive open space in town. We didn't take Ann and Hope space because we're hoping to develop that um, for mixed use just like this, but we want, we want retail on the first floor and then possibly housing up above. And if we go through the, uh, the MBTA, it puts significant restrictions on the, uh, on the retail possibilities for it. So we thought this was a reasonable plan. It gets us very close to the state required numbers and it addresses two areas of town where we think there'll be the least impact on other residents. Okay. Um, I just did the, uh, what did I do? The cemetery. I did the cemetery walk um, just to look over the uh, property and see the improvements and stuff, uh, which was fun. And uh, I think that's it. That's right. it. Okay. Um, the review and approval of the water sewer commitment. Yes, Madam Chair, I'm recommending that the board vote to approve the May 2024 Water Sewer Department commitment to the collector for a, for a total commitment amount of $808,814.11. I move that the board approves the May 2024 Water Sewer Department commitment to the collector for a total commitment amount of $808,814.11. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. And uh, Madam Chair, I'm recommending that the board approve the fourth quarter fiscal year 24 water and sewer department commitment to the collector for a total commitment amount of $805,572.54. 
I move that the board approves the fourth quarter fiscal year 24 water sewer department commitment to the collector for a total commitment amount of $805,572.54. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, unanimous. Now we have approval of draft minutes from 5 2024. I move that the board approves the 5 2024 board meeting minutes as written. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, we have one last item. What do you got? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, we did have a request that just came in um, this morning. I guess that they've been working on it, but the MBTA um, 3A committee um, that the board had appointed has asked for the possibility of including an informational flyer in the next property tax bill. Um, to go out um, just to try to reach as many um, residents as possible uh, in regards to work that's being done regarding the proposed zoning that will be at the fall town meeting. Um, I have spoken with the town treasurer in regards to that. She said that that would not be an issue at all to do that. It would, it would not increase the mailing costs of the bill. Um, but in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 60, Section 3A, Subsection D, um, the select board would have to approve the inclusion of that mailer in the property tax bills for her to be able to add those. Okay. Any discussion? You good? I'm good. Okay. You I move that the board approve the inclusion of an informational flyer in the next property tax bill in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 60, Section 3A. Such flyer to will contain information relating to the proposed MBTA 3A zoning bylaw. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. I move we adjourn. Second. 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 All those in oh. favor? Sam, oh. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. You want to get up? It's been moved and seconded. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> so moved. Sorry. Uh, Lisa Harden, uh, 56 Walnut. I just noticed in your minutes that you just approved that on... May 20, you said the appointment of the finance director would be deferred to tonight. So what's to happen with that? Yes, to the 24th. Deferred, it was deferred again oh. um, to the 24th. Okay. Um, just wondering. Uh, it's basically just we're having to work out the particulars of the employment agreement. That's fine. So it's just officially, it's just going to go to the 24th. Okay, but thanks. We're quite confident that we can negotiate. Yes. Okay, we good? I think we're good. All right. Yeah, all thanks in favor? Oh, all in favor, all of what? Adjourning. adjourning. <laughs> all in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 So <laughs>